How's it going, everybody? If you guys thought that Piers Morgan learned his lesson with the latest cancellation, you'd be mistaken. Apparently, Piers Morgan has not realized that when you start making exceptions to freedoms that you don't like, eventually they're going to get around to making exceptions to freedoms that you do value. Anyway, recently Piers went on the Ben Shapiro show and got an interview, and I'm going to post the interview in the description, or at least the firearms part of it, um, because it really does appear that Piers Morgan has not learned his lesson. So, one of the things Ben asked Piers is if he was ready to buy a uh, ban all firearms. Piers said no, but it would appear in this very same interview that Piers may very well be contradicting himself. Is it out of ignorance, stupidity, or dishonesty? I'll let you guys decide. Anyway, throughout this interview peers does make a lot of apples to oranges comparisons. Uh, one such example is with Mothers Against Drunk Driving. You see, I don't recall Mothers Against Drunk Driving wanting to ban alcohol that exceeded a certain content of alcoholic beverages that exceeded a certain alcohol content. I don't recall Mothers Against Drunk Driving demanding we put limits on the horsepower that our vehicles can have or limits on the amount of gasoline a fuel tank in a car could hold. What it seemed like they were more focused on was making it illegal to drive under the influence and increasing say penalties. So if you want a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison, well, it is illegal to carry a firearm under the influence of alcohol in Texas, and I don't know of any state where it is legal to carry a firearm in public under the influence of alcohol. Now, there's a comment section there, so if somebody knows of a state where it's legal to carry a firearm under the influence of alcohol as a private citizen, do tell, because I'm not aware of uh, any state allowing that. So, oh, and furthermore, you know, when it comes to pistols, federally you have to be 21 to purchase a pistol. No such restriction applies to vehicles. And so far, nobody has proposed such restriction um, when it comes to the carry of firearms. Well, with pistols, it varies. Some states you don't need a permit to carry a pistol. Most do require some form of permit. In some states, their permit to carry a pistol really translates into a no issue. Unless, of course, you have connections and are very wealthy. In no case is one state's license to carry a pistol good in all 50 states, unlike your driver's license, which I think in most states you can get 16 and then they're good in all 50 states. So with that being said, if Piers wanted to have an apples-to-apples -apples conversation about vehicle operation and firearm operation. He'd either have to reduce the restrictions on vehicle operation or, I mean, on firearm operation, or he would have to increase the restrictions on vehicle operation. So, with that being said, Piers is making some apples-to-oranges arguments here. Furthermore, he brings up a time when somebody he knew got carded to buy non-alcoholic beer. Well, unfortunately, yeah, non-alcoholic non beer does have some form of alcohol content in it, even though it's a very small amount. So, I imagine certain places are still going to card you 
that seems to be optional. With that being said, anytime you go to purchase a firearm from a, an establishment that sells firearms, you get carded 100% of the time, no exceptions. And actually more. So if Piers wanted to make an apples to apples comparison on this one, he would have to really increase the restrictions on purchasing even non-alcoholic beers, or he would have to really reduce the restrictions on the purchase of firearms. One of the two would have to be true. Of course, Piers brings up the incident that happened uh, years ago where a nine-year-old accidentally shot and killed her instructor with a nine-millimeter submachine gun. Yes, that incident is tragic. And yeah, there are probably a few minor things that could have been done differently. But what I think Piers is getting at here is something entirely different. And unreasonable. We're going to ban children from shooting firearms with parental permission and supervision as well as permission from a uh, supervision from a trained instructor just because of this well what else are we going to ban just because somebody lost their life doing that activity we're going to ban skydiving driving um 16 year olds driving are uh, we going to ban alcohol cigarettes i mean eventually i mean if your path is to increase the restrictions on or eventually ban something because somebody died doing this activity or owning this particular piece of property eventually you have to ban everything and that would include government which at that point nobody would be around to enforce these restrictions and bans and people would die anyway so this route really is unreasonable Pierce goes on to say that, well, you guys have accepted a ban on automatic weapons in this country, so we should ban firearms like these next, like this P415. Next. And that's all he's asked, supposedly, which it's not, but. So your logic is we first heavily restricted select fire weapons and then ban them, and now we should continue on that path. My side of the aisle has said we shouldn't even have had those restrictions in the first place because they clearly were not good enough for your side. They didn't save any lives. Your side of the aisle wasn't going to be satisfied with them. And they're in direct violation of our Constitution, both Article One and the Second Amendment. Article One being that Congress has exceeded its constitutionally delegated authority to do that. And then the Second Amendment is pretty clear, shall not be infringed. So, we've already gone down all these paths, you know, the heavy restricting of automatic weapons, the banning of automatic weapons in certain states, and the banning of uh, automatic weapons that aren't in the NFA registry prior to May 19th, 1986. And we've pretty much got those restrictions in place that your side is demanded, and they're still not good enough for your side. You know, so yeah, people like me understand that it's always going to be one more gun law. You go on to mention Sandy Hook. Uh, so, Pierce goes on to say, well, there wasn't a universal response to Sandy Hook. And obviously, when Sandy Hook happened, we were a nation that still had over 300 million people in it from various different regions, various different cultures. So common sense is going to dictate to you just on that alone that there's not going to be a universal response. But the fact of the matter is, is there was a, no universal response because people like Piers Morgan came out, didn't really care about stopping Sandy Hooks, 
it was about exploiting those poor dead children in order to further restrict a freedom they didn't like. And the way you can tell is that there were several things that were proposed that didn't involve more restrictions on firearms that people like Piers Morgan said, no, no, we're not going to do this. My side of the aisle said, we've tried this for quite some time. We've tried restricting firearms for quite some time. Let's have a different approach. People on Piers Morgan's side of the aisle couldn't do that, refused to do that. Things such as, okay, Sandy Hook happened in a gun-free zone, which there's a higher correlation of these mass killings happening in gun-free zones than they do in any other part of the country. 94% of all mass killings happen in gun-free zones. My side said, well, if you're not going to get rid of these gun-free zones, at least have additional security there, you know, so they're not such an easy target for mass killers. People on Pierce Morgan's side of the aisle said, we can't do that. We don't want to feel like our children are going to prison. We said, okay, lift the gun-free zones. We can't do that. Faculty shouldn't be allowed to carry. Okay, uh, quit giving these mass killers wall-to-wall -wall coverage like um, they go for. Well, many of them go for anyway, you know, to get that notoriety. Well, we can't do that. That's restricting a freedom that we like. Well, you know, and by the way, my side, for the most part, wasn't saying, you know, have any law. We were just saying voluntarily, don't splash that coverage up wall to wall. But every time a mass killing happens, it seems like the news media has, the corporate news media has this period to where they want to give these mass killers the wall to wall coverage that many of them seem to crave. Um, so, really, I mean, if it doesn't involve restricting firearms further, uh, Piers Morgan's side of the aisle really doesn't want to hear it. Piers Morgan goes on to mention Dunblane, and I'm going to cover the next few things that Piers mentioned, just one after the other, because it ties into exactly what my side of the aisle has been saying for quite some time. When Dunblane happened in the 90s, the UK already had far more restrictive gun laws than what we had in the US. You couldn't own the dreaded AR-15 there. Uh, you had to have a license to own a firearm there. Um, the laws were incredibly restrictive. Dunblane happened, and Pierce himself says, "Well, we went to ban on, uh, we went on to ban most of the guns that were still legal to have there." True statement. Um, then after that didn't work, they went on to put a five-year mandatory prison sentence for possession of a of an illicit firearm there. Well, their knife crime started going up, as Pierce put it. Money and all this, oh, and by the way, they started to restrict the carrying of knives there. Carrying a knife like this in the UK is illegal, even though I do this without thinking about it in the US, as many people do. Over there, I would go to jail for that. But, again, did Pierce say anything about any reduced homicide rates? Well, no. And that's because the homicide rates there in the UK did not go down. Period. They haven't really gone down since they had gun laws comparable to ours. And even, you know, prior to the 1920s, when their gun laws then are actually less restrictive than the gun laws that we in the U.S. have today. So, <laughs> uh, 
again, Pierce kind of contradicted himself when he said he wasn't looking to ban all firearms. Well, unless he meant, you know, that the few firearms that you're legally allowed to possess after you jump through a whole bunch of hoops in the UK is considered, you know, not a ban. Well, in my book, that's pretty much a firearms might as well be banned. But Piers goes on to say there's only three things. Well, he actually says four in this, but he says three things um, that he wants to see happen in America. Uh, one, universal background checks. Well, you know what? We already have background checks in this country. Furthermore, people who are buying firearms for other people who are prohibited are already breaking the law. So why on earth should I have to get a background check or somebody I know is not a prohibited person has to get a background check every time I loan them, trade them, et cetera, et cetera, a firearm. You know, sorry, that should not happen. Furthermore, with universal background checks, you know they're going to say, well, that didn't work, we now need registration. Come on, guys, you already gave us the universal background checks. Give us more. Ten-round magazine limits, and he also kind of threw in licenses to sport shoot. This pistol came standard capacity 17 round magazines came with three of them. Most firearms today have magazines with standard capacities of greater than 10 rounds. That's commonplace. What's happened is that people like Piers Morgan, who know little to nothing about firearms, have just arbitrarily decided that they want a 10-round limit, don't have any evidence to back up a 10-round limit's going to save lives, but they want it anyway. I am vehemently opposed to that. And then Piers goes on for his third thing to say a ban on assault rifles. Well, what Piers is talking about is not assault rifles. Those were banned in 1986 in the U.S. What Piers is talking about is, and by the way, it's not just rifles. Uh, the ban that uh, is getting talked about, uh, the quote, assault weapons ban, makes this pistol illegal. Why, you might ask? Threaded right barrel. That is what they are using as a gauge to say a firearm is somehow more dangerous. So, again, Pierce has not learned his lesson. Quite frankly, I don't think he ever will. And he's also presented a case as to why my side of the aisle says, not only are we not giving you one more inch, but we want to start repealing these restrictions. We want these restrictions to go away because it clearly hasn't done what your side said it's done. Your side of the aisle still isn't satisfied with your proposals, uh, with uh, the gun laws you already have, and so you're coming up with more proposals. And it's always going to be the case until firearms or like they are in Japan or the UK, which pretty much might as well be banned. So, no, my side is done with this. Anyway, for those of y'all been watching, as you know, the comment section is free to leave your two cents in there. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all take your easy out there and have a great day.